ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه به ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله واحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محتزاتها وكل محتزه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار The seerah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam The biography, the lifetime of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam His companions requires a way to read it You have to learn to read it with your heart before your eyes with your soul before your eyes and with your heart and soul and mind then you start to read it al bahi al is a Muslim scholar who died 25 years ago I'm going to share with you a small paragraph where he describes the way we should read the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa He says, you should accompany the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, as you read the seerah. You accompany him with your heart, with your soul. It's as if you exist in the place that you are reading. You can feel that you are in the place where the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is. When he sits in a place, you are among the people who are accompanying him. When he is riding his horse, you are riding a horse next to him. As he walks down the alleys and the streets with his companions, you are with them. You can almost hear his speech in your own ears. And slowly and gradually, you can hear his supplications whether in the night or in the day. Your emotions run so high that you could almost feel the heartbeats of the Prophet Muhammad You can feel it when he is angry. You can feel it when he is happy. And you can feel it when he smiles. You can feel it as he walks along the ranks of Muslims. You are with them as people around him and him and the Prophet Muhammad with them as they suffer, you suffer with them as they feel the pain, you feel the pain with them as they migrate, you migrate with them with your mind, with your soul with your emotions, you migrate with them all over the world as they conquer and when jihad comes you can see yourself riding a horse, holding the flag of Muslims. And you can see the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, riding his horse. And he is wearing the shield of war and the armor of war. And he has his sword on him as the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is holding his sword. You can see his face. You can see his eyes beyond the shield that covers the face. He is the leader in the battlefield. He is the leader of the knights who are fighting the enemy. You can see his eyes from under the sheep. No matter mountain he goes up to, or a hill or a valley he goes down, you are with him. Whatever 
the enemy suffers from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu you are among them, you could almost feel the beating that is taking place in the war and the contact between the Muslim army and the Kafir army, you could feel it. The clashes among them. You could feel the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and sense as he ventures into the enemy's lines and you are with him to protect him. You try to protect the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, with all what you have. And you try to protect him with your body, with your soul, with your heart and with your emotions. End of the statement. The Imam Zahri said, we used to teach our children the wars of the Prophet Muhammad In teaching them, you will get the knowledge of this life and the hereafter. They may choose that the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad is hand in hand memorized with the Quran. Al Ali ibn said, We used to teach the words of the Prophet Muhammad and his journeys the same way we teach Quran. Ismail ibn Muhammad ibn Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas, he said, my father used to teach us about the wars of the Prophet Muhammad and he used to ask us questions to make sure that we understand every single details about it. And he used to tell us, my son, this is the heritage of your forefathers. Do not waste it and do not forget it. <coughs> Thabit al-Banani mentioned that Anas ibn Malik, he said to Anas ibn Malik, because Abu Malik was able to see the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu So Thabit ibn Ali used to tell him, give me your eyes that saw the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu so I can kiss them. al maqdad ibn Aswad one day was sitting and he saw a man passing by and that man was among the companions of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and the maqdad was not there at that time. So he said, lucky those eyes that saw the Prophet Muhammad I wish I had the opportunity to see him the same way you, you saw him and I'll be a witness the same way you witnessed him. <coughs> Abda bin Tukhalik ibn Ma'dan, she said, whenever my father went to his bed, he would remember how excited he wants to meet the Prophet Muhammad and the companions of the Prophet Muhammad from Muhajirin and Ansar. And he used to call them, he said, they are from me and I am from them. To them my heart throbs and excited to meet them. I'm so excited for the day when Allah will give me the opportunity to be with them. O oh Allah Almighty, gather me with them. أقول ما تسمعون وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروا إنه هو الله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم لإحسان يوم الدين ربيع بن كعب said the Prophet Muhammad came one day and told me, ask him, you shall get it. I said to him, Ya Rasulullah, give me a chance to think about something, so I will ask you. So the Prophet Muhammad told him, you can do that. Rabia said, I started thinking, everything in this life is going to end. Therefore, I don't see anything in this life I can ask for it because it is going to end. So I went to the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, So the Prophet Muhammad said to me, So what is your request? I said, Ya Rasulullah, ask Allah Almighty to protect me from hellfire. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and said, Who told you that? He said, No one. But Ya Rasulullah, I thought about it and I realized if I would ask anything about this life, this life is going to end with the people in it. So there's no sense of asking about anything in this life. So that's why I thought of something in the hereafter. 
So the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, help me in performing sujood. That is, increase the nafil prayers, the extra prayers. Your forehead should be on the ground to perform sujood. Abu Hurairah radiallahu narrated that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, the happiest people with my prayers to be spared from hellfire are the ones who say la ilaha illallah and they are honest and sincere in their hearts. Jabir radiallahu an mentioned that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu said, if you hear the call for adhan, say as the Mu'adhan says, and as he finishes the adhan, say Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad kama sallayta ala Sayyid Ibrahim wa Sayyid Ibrahim. Allahumma rabba hadhi da'wat tam wa salatu qanam. In the meaning of it, O oh Allah Almighty, we see that your mercy be on the, on the Prophet Muhammad and you raise him in the place in heaven that is designated for him and him only. And the Prophet Muhammad because I want to be in that place. And he said, if you say this after the Adhan, you will get my prayers that you will be protected from hellfire. The Prophet Muhammad said, Whoever says, Sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad, Allahumma salli wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammad, ten times in the day, in the morning, and ten times in the evening, he will be granted my sisters. To summarize what I mentioned to you, there are external factors and internal factors to reach out into the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu In the first part of the khutbah, I was explaining about the internal elements that you have in yourself to react to the seerah. As I mentioned to you, when you read the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad <laughs> you don't read it with your eyes, you read it with your heart and emotions. And as a Bahir Kuli explained it in a marvelous paragraph that I told you about, is that you transfer yourself into the text, into the Arab. 1400 years ago, you are among them. And as you read and you can feel yourself, in that era, you are attached to the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad and therefore your emotions will, will flow and therefore you will get the benefits of reading it, the knowledge of this life and the hereafter. Your spirits will be high, your emotions will be high, your leadership skills will be, will be high, you will learn all the lessons of the Prophet Muhammad when you do not read the seerah, you read it. You do not read it like a newspaper. You read it because you want the emotions to flow between you and the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad This is the internal. The external factors are what I mentioned in the second half of this book. That the Prophet Muhammad told us about. When you remind yourself about the Prophet Muhammad Allahumma salli wa sallam ala Muhammad You say it ten times in the day and ten times in the night. At the same time, after the Adhan, you ask Allah Almighty to put the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, in the highest place in the heaven. And you ask Allah Almighty to bless the Prophet Muhammad and protect him. This is another external factor. The third factor is that a sujood that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, if you want to reach that level, you should perform more nafil. That is, your face is on the floor, on the ground, performing sujood. These factors together, external and internal, will strengthen your iman, will strengthen your dreams, your faith. Then there is a reaction between you and the life of the Prophet Muhammad So all of the teachings of our ancestors, of our rich history of Islam, what made the Muslim nation so strong will come to you and you will become a unique person. Think of this. If you have gone through this, tell me, would your reading of the Qur'an be the same or not? Would your reaction of the Qur'an be the same as it is nowadays or not? If you reacted with seerah, now wasn't the seerah, the Qur'an was revealed throughout the seerah? So when you read the Qur'an, will your reading of the Qur'an be the same? It will never be the same. What if when you read the tafsir of the Qur'an, and in your background you lived these circumstances in your heart and your soul. 
Do you think you will forget about the tafsir of the Quran or the revelation of the ayah of the Quran? I'll take it one step further. If you were able to achieve both of them, would you ever be bored from reading the Quran? Abdullah bin Mas'ud said it plainly. He said, if your hearts are pure, you will never get tired from reading the Quran. That's it. That is it. The minute there is a reaction, you can no longer stop. And that explains why when you read about the lifetime of the Sahaba and the Tabi'een, when they mentioned that they used to pray so many hours at night and finish so much in the Quran, because he's not reading it as a text, there's a relationship, there's an emotion. He can see himself living in that era, living in the circumstances, living in the features, in the verses, with the prophets that are mentioned in the Quran, because you were part of that experience. So you live it, you can see yourself. That's when the treasures of the Quran and the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad start flowing in your heart and your soul. And that was has changed people from being ordinary people at the time of the Prophet Muhammad to be the masters of this earth and their names are mentioned till the day of judgment. I ask Allah Almighty what I have said that we all apply these principles. And I ask Allah Almighty to give us the ability to react with the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad and therefore to react with the Quran and then to react with the prayers itself and raise our levels to the levels, the highest place where we can meet the Prophet Muhammad and his companions. Allahumma gfir in the name of Muslimat, and ahiyai minhum wal amwaat. Allahumma gfir lana ma maddamna, wa ma akharna, wa ma asrarna, wa ma a'lanna. Allahumma yassir lana Quran. Allahumma rsukna tilawatuhu ala al-layl wa nahar ala al-wajh ladhi yudhika anna ya rabbana. Allahumma shumallana wa allah al-muslimin. Allahumma sabhana wa mujahidina fi kulli makan. Allahumma hafuq abnaana wa banaatana wa zawjaatana wa manhawlana ya rabbana. اللهم إنا نسألك من خير ما سألك عبدك ونبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم في هذا اليوم الشريف المبارك ونعوذ بك من شر ما استعاذ منه عبدك ونبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم في هذا اليوم المبارك يا رب العالمين اللهم زينا بزينة الإيمان واجعلنا هداة المهتدين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي الصلاة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقم الصلاة Allah, 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 Allah.